All right, guys, greeting. This is me, Payment. Today, we're going to be uh, kicking off, well, this is the my talk for the uh, day three about identifying your zone of genius. We had an amazing talk by Jordan and Mark on leveraging LinkedIn. So let's get going without any further ado. Let me find the right screen. Okay. Do you guys see my screen? Yes. All right. Okay, so this is day three. Okay, make sure I'm on the right one. All right, so tonight we're gonna talk about money. We're gonna talk about actually getting leads and getting clients through your podcast. I'm gonna show you how to get leads on demand and high ticket clients to make money with your podcast. Sorry, rather, what's gonna take for you to get leads on demand and make money with your podcast, profitable podcast, ASAP. And that is what you're gonna going to tackle. So first and foremost, we have to understand what is the main issue that most entrepreneurs online uh, face. And that is because the number one reason why most entrepreneurs struggle to get any traction, whether it's leads or, or clients, is because they lack clarity. They want to help everyone with all the issues. Instead, what we need to do is we need to, to be very clear, crystal clear as to what is the one pain point we're solving and for who. And the more specific we are, the better it's going to be. Because if your message is vague, like I help people get fit, get financially independent, get happy and whatnot, your message is not going to relate with anyone. And if it doesn't relate with anyone, not going to get anywhere. Not going to get any leads. No leads, no clients. No clients, no money. No money, no business. As simple as that. That's hard truth. And that's what we're going to tackle here. So you know, how do you fix that? We fix that simply by identifying your zone of genius and true gifts. That's going to be the foundation of my approach of everything I do so that we can, all we have to do is just speak from the heart by sharing your story. And we're going to be, once you identify your zone of genius, we're going to take that. We're going to leverage that to, to, to build your offer, craft your messaging, build your business, and ultimately your podcast are in zone of genius, because that's going to be very, very important on that. So here's my four-step approach to a very profitable, impactful, purposeful, not just podcast, but also business. Again, as you may have been hearing me saying it over and over again, I'll say it over and over again until the end of time, because that's the ultimate foundation that's going to make or break it, not just your podcast, but your business. And that is number one. We're going to identify your true zone of genius and true gifts. Then... That's going to allow us to have clarity at, on as to what is the number one pain point you're addressing and solving, not just to your podcast, but also to your business. Once we have that, that's going to also allow us to identify in a very logical way, no guesswork required, as to who is that one person, specific person you can help, and that person is going to be your avatar. The more specific, the better. And again, I'm going to expand on that later. Ideally, that person is no... Uh, that person is no other than yourself. And I'm going to explain to you why. And then once you've done that, the next step is simply to identify where is that person hanging out the most and simply inviting them onto your podcast. As simple as that. Do you guys see how powerful, how logical that system is? Anyone? All right, cool. Here's my personal way. Not just mine, but also I've seen it with other very successful entrepreneurs use it. That is the best way to, there's four ways to identify your zone of genius. The first one is to look at your professional background. Let's say you've spent 10, 15, 20 years at whatever industry. That's the first place and obvious place to start because you understand that industry, you speak the language, you know what is the pain point of the person that you're helping. That's very obvious. Second one is if you have any high income skill that you may have learned or acquired in the process that can be for example say copywriting closing negotiation and uh, coding and so on and so forth third one is if you have any natural god-given inner talent some people are amazing with numbers some people with a memory some people with words some people with drawing painting music sports whatever there's so many people that have built very successful and profitable businesses just teaching Others, what they're good at, whether it's playing the guitar, piano, reading faster, 
improving their memory, dancing, whatever. If you have a skill that you're good at, then you can definitely monetize that. The last one, and that is the most common, the most popular one, and that is any major life challenge that you may have overcome yourself. Because again, your crop is your gold. What you've successfully overcome, other people are going through it right now. And these people are desperately looking for someone that's been in their shoes, walk the walk, to extend their hands, so to speak, and help them get out of the way, get out of that hole, so to speak. So this is what, these are the four most common ways to identify your zone of genius. So I'd like to, to, to get some interaction here. Which one of these four approaches applies to you when it comes to identifying zone of genius? Let's hear it for at least a couple of people. To repeat the question. Can you repeat that question? All right. So looking at these four ways to identify your zone of genius, which yeah. one of those applies to you when it comes to identifying your zone of genius? Um, <clears throat> I guess I could look at my professional experiences and backgrounds. I was a school teacher, then a school uh, vice principal and principal, and then I became a pastor. And so that gives me quite a background of mm -hmm. probably 40 years as a pastor. So, oh, wow. Uh, and then I also started a leadership training college. So, those are professional mm -hmm. backgrounds. Mm -hmm. and That's amazing. Somebody should write that down. <laughs> and <laughs> and you, you've, got, you, you've got an MBA. Oh, yes. I have an MBA in leadership, coaching, and mentoring. Oh, awesome. <clears throat> so if you look at your background, 40 years as a pastor, what is the number one pain point among pastors that you've identified? That, for, sorry that you yourself faced and now you can turn around and help current pastors overcome because you've been a pastor, you've, you've walked in the shoes, you've lived it every day. What was your main pressing challenge when you were a pastor all those years that you wished was solved was, an, was a solution to it? And that can be a very profitable, impactful, and purposeful business. Well, I could say there's probably... <clears throat> a couple of things is burnout. Mm -hmm. um, there is no, <clears throat> generally there is no hours for a pastor. They're expected to be there 24 seven. Mm -hmm. And um, so burnout is quite there. And also um, there's, there's <clears throat> a lot of pain that comes through uh you know, the uh, confrontations, the... Uh, criticisms. The, the criticism, confrontation. People's mm. expectations that you can't meet. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, you know, it's like, um, that's yeah. so true. Uh, okay. You know, the, the, the thing that said the ideal pastor is, is uh, six feet tall, uh, five foot six and also has black hair on one side of his head <laughs> and it's straight and the other side it's blonde and curly one eye blue one eye brown <laughs> you know. um, anyway everybody has an expectation for what you're going to be what and uh, and uh, usually it doesn't go very very well um we had this one couple come quickly. Uh, I'll <laughs> say it to you. They came for dinner. We knew there was a problem, knew there was an issue. They came at 6 o'clock. At 11 o'clock, as we're standing at the door, they decided to drop the issue on us. <laughs> and they were upset because they thought we were their best friends. And they hadn't seen us very often. I said, well, look at the last year. Our church has grown from 25 people to 200. Our... Uh, for, we have four children, and they're all moving up in school. And my wife's parents came to live with us. We have a lot on the plate, so it, our time is not as available. So mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing you would deal with, but uh, it gets a lot worse. 
<laughs> All right, cool. That's a good start. We can, uh, I invite you guys to, to uh, book a call with me next week so we can further brainstorm together to really hone in your, identify your zone of genius. But also tonight, I'm going to be providing you guys with some more tools to really do some work on your own, to really brainstorm, because that's going to be very important for moving on from tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to take your zone of genius and, and, and craft your offer, build your messaging, and basically build your business and your podcast around your zone of genius. So thank you for sharing that, Jim. Uh, I'll share my calendar at the end of the call. Let's hear one more person as to which one of these would apply to you. Um, can I say that? So uh, basically, ahead. I'm a very ambitious person. And mm -hmm. then if I'm going to do something, um, first, I do a lot of research about it. And then uh, after that, I think about it a lot to strategize it. Mm. And then after that, I do it. But when I'm going to do it, I do it very slowly because I'm not going to do it very fast without any um, how to say it means I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put some uh, quality into it, so that's mm. why I'm doing it so slow. Uh, basically, I've been uh, developing a mobile application and a website for my own self, which is gonna be uh, actually my own business, and it's already been six years, um, and still is under developing. And then few times I build it. And I said, okay, no, I don't want this one. So I have to build it from scratch again. From the beginning, I started. And then I built that again. And then I didn't like it. I said, okay, never mind. One more time. Which again, I have started actually recently, a week ago, with a, a good friend of mine, which also he's my colleague at the company I'm working with. Um, yeah, but let's see this time what's going on and what's going to go. But awesome. the thing is, I'm very ambitious about whatever, whatever I'm going to do. Uh, it's like if I, because always I have a vision. And then once I read somewhere, you should be like a horse. You know, they put the blinder for the horse when they are in the, yes. in the mm -hmm. match. So basically I'm that kind of person. So I don't look at my surrounding, what's going to happen. Because I have that blinds for myself. Mm -hmm. And then I just look at the target, what I'm going to achieve. Yeah, that's right up. That's also what I do. Uh, yeah. That's what it takes to succeed. Focus, focus, focus. Not getting distracted by any shining object. That's the way to go. Well done. Thank you for sharing that, brother. All right, let's move on. I want really all of you guys to really think and brainstorm on your own on that. Because that's going to be very, very important. Because your zone of genius is what we're going to use to build everything from now on. And I'm going to share more with you here. Also, another way that you can identify your zone of genius is if there is anything that you're really known for in your circle, that you really love geeking out, that you really, that's something that people recognize you as. For example, when I was, when I was in college uh, uh, in the first few years, I was known as Mr. Brazil. I used to go to Brazil all the time. People, I was obsessed with Brazil, and people asked me any question. Anytime you have a question with Brazil, it would come to me. But of course, it's not something you can monetize now with Google and YouTube. Information is free. And it's why I always say, don't make your business transactional. It's not about your time. It's not about your knowledge. It's about transformation. So is there anything, again, that you, your friends, family, and people around you always come to you? for guidance, for help, advice, or anything, a hobby that you love geeking about, that's a great way to, to, to start as far as identifying your zone of genius. And one mistake we all make is that we take our gifts, our talents for granted. For us, they're nothing special because they're second nature. So always ask, for example, we have a beautiful couple right here. Jim, you can ask Bonnie, what is something that you're really good at? And vice versa. Bonnie can ask Jim. And, and, and all of you guys, ask people in your life, hey, what I'm really good at, what do you know me for? And you'd be surprised at what people will, will answer you. So try that with your family, with your, with your friends, with your relatives, with your, your partners, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, and so on and so forth. Try that. This is a very simple exercise, but very powerful because, again, 
we take for granted our our gifts because they're nothing special. They're second nature. So do that. And also, do not discard anything. Just because for you it's second nature, it can be something amazing for someone else. Does that make sense, guys? All right, so do that. That's another beautiful way for you to identify your zone of genius. Again, as I always keep, keep saying, your crap is your gold, literally. Some people can say your mess is your message. Every painful challenge, uh, whether it was abuse, trauma, tragedy, betrayal, financial struggle, disease, whatever you overcame in your life. The other people are going to that right now we're desperately looking for guidance for someone that has that that has successfully overcome that. Again, as I keep saying all the time, when people are looking for a coach or a mentor, an activator, they're not looking for a disconnected billionaire. They're looking for someone who's one, two, three, at most four steps ahead of them. Someone that is relatable, they can identify with, they can connect with, and someone that is accessible and reachable. And that's you because you've been in your shoes. So always remember that. Your crap is your gold. And now, once we have identified your zone of genius, we identified what is the pain point that you can solve, because again, your crap is your gold. And once we've done that, then the next logical step is to identify who's the person that you can help at the highest level. As I mentioned, your avatar is, ideally your avatar is someone who resembles you as much as possible, who looks like you and resonates with you. For example, me as a guy, can I be a trustworthy and... Uh, successful coach for women that are going through pregnancy right now. No, because I'm not there. I can, I can never experience that myself. Sure, I can learn about it, but I can never really experience it. So instead, look for someone that resembles you as much as possible, that looks like you, that resonates you. And even that's your ideal avatar. However, your ultimate avatar is no one other than yourself. When you were starting just a few steps ago, build your business, build your offer, build your podcast the way you wished existed when you were just a few steps ago, when you were starting your journey. Does that make sense, guys? Because when you do that, you're just sharing your story, speaking from the heart. And you come across very authentically, very passionately. And that's what people want. People want authenticity, passion, truth, being vulnerable. And that's the best way to really connect in a way that they will drop their guard, open their heart, and open their wallets. Again, I just mentioned that. So that is very important, guys. Your avatar, ideally your avatar is someone that as close as possible to you. But ultimately, your avatar is no one else than yourself when you were just starting a few steps ago. That is very key, guys. And once you've done that, again, the more specific you can be, at the highest level you can help people, the more magnetic your message will be. And the more magnetic your message is, guess what? The more profitable, impactful, purposeful your message, your offer, and your podcast are going to be. And again, in order to determine that, we need to go back to your zone of genius to identify, again, what is your zone of genius? And there's, as I mentioned, there's four ways you can identify that. Do some really soul searching, brainstorming as to really see which one of those four applies the most to you. I get, I get it. Some of you guys may, more than one of those can apply to you. You use an ex exercise I do in my academy and I call it mapping your life. Take a piece of paper, make columns, and then map out Add all of the very painful challenges and, and, and phases uh, and chapters of your life. You don't need to write a, an essay, just one or two keywords for each chapter. And then at the bottom, ask these two questions. What is this trying to teach me? What is the lesson for me to learn to that? And then once you've completed, stare at it. See which one speaks to you in the most visceral way and the most powerful way. The one that evokes the, the, the strongest emotions. And then right there and then you will know that this is your zone of genius, the one that really gets you going the most. The more painful, the more hurtful the challenge you overcome, the more beautiful, impactful, purposeful, and the more profitable that's going to be for you. Because what you went through, other people are going through right now. We're just dying 
for someone like you to be a big brother, big sister, to, to extend your hand and get them out of there. Does that make sense, guys? Go ahead, Bonnie. What were the two questions you said? Um, what is that trying to teach me? Yeah, and? And what is the lesson for me to learn to that? What is the lesson? Thank you. Very welcome. These two questions have completely changed my life. My TED Talk I did last August was exactly based on that. So I invite you guys to watch it if you haven't watched it. Anyways, does that make sense to you guys? Do you see how straightforward, how logic, and how important that is? It's all about your zone of genius. We're not building a business based on a trend or something that's sexy or something that's profitable. You don't have to do any research on the environment, the economy, and none of that nonsense. You're just sharing your story from the heart in an authentic, passionate, vulnerable way. The more authentic, the more passionate, the more vulnerable you can be, the more you will be able to connect. And once you connect, you build rapport, you build trust. Once you build trust, that's when magic happens, doors open, wallets open, and so on and so forth, and everything else in between open. All right? So that is very, very, very important. Now, once we've, again, the four-step approach. One, what is your own genius? What is the pain point you hold, you're solving and addressing? And for who? Well, and then that's going to allow us to determine what is your podcast going to be about. It's, 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 there's no guesswork required. It's all by process of elimination. Straightforward. Everything built upon the others, the previous step. So it's very, very straightforward, guys. Again, once we have identified, you have identified your zone of genius and what is your ideal listeners. And then your podcast will address these three points. Not only your podcast, but also your offer, your messaging. Again, your zone of genius, whether it's a skill, talent, high income skill, major life challenge you overcome. What is the pain point you're solving and for who? And again, the more specific, the more magnetic. The more magnetic, the more profitable it's going to be. That is the key. All right. Here's some powerful reminders. You guys all already know that because you're veteran business people, all of you. As I mentioned since the beginning, don't make your business transactional. It's not about your time. It's not about your knowledge. There's always a ceiling as to how much you can charge for your time. There's always a ceiling how much you can charge for your, for your knowledge because knowledge can be pretty much obtained for free nowadays with Google, YouTube, and and uh, and chat GPT and so on and so forth. Instead, make it transformational. Can anyone give me an example of a transactional business and a transformational business? A quick example. So we can all understand it very clearly. This is very, very key. Give me one example of a transactional business. Um grocery store yeah and or it can be a freelancer for example a what a freelancer let's say you, you hire someone to create a banner for you that's a transactional you exactly. pay them as let's say 50 dollars for a banner that's transactional yeah now give me an example of a transformational business counselor okay Yes, oh. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's you help in someone save their marriage. How much would that be worth for you and for them? Mm -hmm. Depends on Let's... how badly you <laughs> hate your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I apologize to everybody. <laughs> no worries, no worries, no worries. So again, the bigger the transformation the more painful the pain point you're addressing and solving, the more, you, not only the more you can charge, but the more willing your prospect will be because they have a really important burning desire to solve that. Let's say, for example, let's take the example of a marriage counselor. Let's say some couple is about to face divorce and we all know how devastating a divorce can be. Uh, in a couple, you're losing pretty much everything. You're losing maybe a high six-figure 
to I seven, eight figures. And instead, let's say I were to come and I say, I'm a divorce coach and I will guarantee you will not, you will save you, I will save you marriage, but my, my fee is $50,000 or $100,000. That's a lot of money. But in contrast to how much I'm making you save, it's a no brainer. Do you see that? Or well, let's say, for example, Jay is charging at the lowest $25,000. To his VIP program, $65,000, what, $64,000, something like that. But what is the outcome is is getting you? Life-changing. The more Because that's a trans, an, an, an amazing example of a transformational business. For example, for me, I'm helping coaches and entrepreneurs to get leads on demand and clients organically, even if you have no audience, through podcasting. That is transformational because if you have, if your offer is two thousand dollars, and you get one client a week organically to your podcast, that's an extra six figure for your business. So if I, and I can charge five ten thousand dollars for that, because of the transformation I'm bringing. Do you guys see what is a transformational business versus a transactional? So again, this is very important. I want you to get guys to really understand that. Because that's going to, we're not just launching a podcast here. The podcast is going to be just the tip of the iceberg. What we're doing is deep work to identify your zone of genius. And then we're going to take that zone of genius and build your offer, your messaging, and basically your business. And your podcast is going to be the marketing arm of it. Because podcast is the best way to build that trust. We all understand that business is all about trust. So that's very important. Speaking of trust, as I've said since the beginning, business and high ticket selling is about one thing and one thing only, trust. And how do you build that trust? By building rapport. How do you build a rapport? By sharing your story, by speaking from the heart, by having heart up conversation. And what the best platform to do so? Podcast. The next one, is, as I mentioned many times already, People want to work with someone who's just a few steps ahead of them. Not a billion, disconnected billionaire. Sure, the billionaire would be nice for social media pictures, for vanity metrics, but for actual real-life transformation, they want someone that they can relate with, someone that is accessible, they can identify with, they can resonate with. So again, really always remember these principles because these are absolute basics of business. You guys all know that because you've been in business before. You're very, you, you're all veterans. So this is very important. Here's another powerful quote of mine. Never put yourself in a position to ask, beg, or chase. Instead, invite. This is very powerful. Let's say you want to you work with someone. You say, hey, Mark, hey, Mary, could you please do me a favor and send me testimonial? Sure, they will do it, but you have to chase after them. But instead, you say, hey, Mark, hey, Mary, I'm excited to start my podcast. I love working with you, and I would love for you to be one of my first guests. Oh, wow. Absolutely. You say when? Send me a calendar. They will be chasing you. And this is the approach I've used to grow my podcast from zero to almost 400 episodes. And now, past the 100 high-ticket client mark with a YouTube channel of less than for most of the time, less than 200 subscribers. Now it's at 1,420, which is still absolutely tiny. But it's an approach. That approach plus using, leveraging the podcast to get your foot on the door, as I explained yesterday, on benefits of podcasting, and then using that time to build that trust, that confidence, that rapport. And once you do that, everything is a natural, automatic, organic progression. Does that make sense, guys? All right, cool. Now, how would you like to get leads organically through your podcast and YouTube channel, even if you have no audience to start with? Because when I started, I had no audience. You know, you can literally and realistically start getting leads on demand and clients in as little as 30 days from the moment you launch your podcast. I've done it. My students have, are doing it. And it's a very replicable system. So how is that possible? That's possible because the outdated, obsolete 
an old way and that, that is what most so-called gurus are pushing is to monetize a YouTube channel. You need to have, or a podcast, you need to have a massive, massive audience or be a celebrity or be a world-class renowned expert with multiple PhDs after your name. For someone to build, starting from scratch, to build an audience big enough to cover just the basic expenses, that's a long game. That's going to take at least five to 10 years, realistically. When I started, I didn't have that time. I need to make money yesterday because I was beyond broke. So instead, there's a new way, smarter way to, to monetize a podcast. And that's what I've been sharing with you guys. Identify your zone of genius. What is the pain point you're solving? For who? Identify where is your, your ideal client hanging out and simply inviting them and build trust and rapport. Very simple, but incredibly powerful. Do you guys see now the picture coming together? All the pieces? That's very simple, but very incredibly efficient. So again, once you implement that, once you launch a podcast, within 30 days of launching, you can start getting leads on demand. And then depending how targeted your audience is, how good is your offer, and how good is your, your closing skill, so to speak, you can start turning those leads into clients. I can go out today, make a post, and get 50 to 100, cli 50 to 100 leads within 24 to 48 hours. For me, my challenge is not getting the leads, finding the time to nurturing them and then closing them. That's why I, I joined Jay's program, because I want to become a better closer. So that is very, very doable if you simply follow the, ste the, the systems, the steps, sorry. Now you have two options. You can either say, wow, this is cool, but it's not for me and do nothing. Or you can actually do something and ask yourself a very powerful question, which is how can I implement that into my business, my life? How can I get my exact idea leads on demand if I have no audience to start with without spamming and, zero, uh, and uh, no ad spend? By very simply launching a profitable podcast and YouTube channel where you simply invite your exact ideal listeners, prospects, and clients and build rapport. On your podcast, you don't sell, you don't pitch, you just build rapport by having hard -to conversations. As simple as that. Here's my invitation to you guys. Book a call with me either for Friday or next week, 30 minutes. We're going to brainstorm together. Whoops. Brainstorm together to see how we can implement that into your business. We're going to further further um, brainstorm about your zone of genius and in your offer and all that and see how having your own profitable podcast and profitable YouTube channel is going to make sense for you, for your business, for your situation, for, for your goals. So book a call with me. That's my Calendly for either Friday or next week. And let's rock and roll. Any questions? I know it's getting late. People are, I'm, I'm starving, but we're almost done. Any questions? Yes, go ahead, uh, Michael. I have a strange question that just came up while you're sharing. And, you know, like I said, I did a podcast before, but I never thought about sponsorship. Uh -huh. uh, but yet, yeah, that's for collaboration. But one thing that you mentioned is, can we, I know it's going to sound kind of weird, but it just really hit me because like what I invite people to do is live a high vibrational life, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, we eat good foods and things like that. So I also work with this, this water that I work with it. Can I use, not, can I, I'm not asking for permission, excuse me. I'm asking for, you know, like clarity, right? So is it smart or would it be too egotistical? That's more my question because how do I paint the picture? Cause Basically, drinking this water raises your vibration because people are drinking dead, stagnant, acidic water. So it's going to improve every part of their lives, right? So can I say that this water is sponsored? Because more importantly, like God's spirit sponsors my podcast more than anything. Um, so can I include that as a sponsorship? Because, of course, I want to give all the glory and the gratitude to, you know, the source that allows us to do this, number one. Um, can I include that or would that be too airy-fairy? Because I because I share about vibration, I focus on vibration, and I want to attract those clients about vibration. So if they think I'm too airy fairy, 
maybe that's not the clients for me. That's my question. Great question. My answer would be if that if your message if if that's gonna resonate deeply with the audience, by all means. Okay. It's all about knowing your audience. But I would defer that question to our and to our in-house pastors. Jim and Bonnie, what is your take on that? Uh, my, I mean, my thought is if that's you and that's uh -huh. what you're, and that's what you're all about, then that's really the audience you're speaking to, then why not? Exactly. Thank you. I live this all day, every day. This is all I focus on. So thank you. And if Appreciate that's what you are, if that's yeah. the people you want to, you want to attract by all means. And if that's going to further allow you to vet and to, you know, remove the people that are not aligned with you, even better. So, you know, yeah. don't waste your time and they don't waste their time. Mm -hmm. I think there's people that will resonate with it. And mm -hmm. those are the people that you're looking for. And exactly. there you go. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you You're welcome. You're welcome. Any other questions? Let me see how many people we can have you, here. Can you go back one slide for your with your details there? Yeah, there. Yeah, Thank I'll you. share it in the in the Facebook group. And I will also okay. share the slides with you guys either later tonight or early tomorrow morning. Oh, okay. So uh yeah. Good stuff. Any other questions? Let's see how many people we have left here. Uh, okay, any more questions? All right, here's a sneak peek into tomorrow. So again, please do the the uh, the brainstorming, the homework for tonight as to what is your zone of genius because we're going to take that and tomorrow we're going to build your Godfather offer because again, your offer is going to be based on your zone of genius, on your gifts. So it's imperative for you to really identify what is your true zone of genius? And I shared with you the four ways that you can implement to utilize to identify your zone of genius. Once you have your zone of genius, it's going to become very obvious for you what is the pain point you're solving, then very obvious as to we can up at the highest level. Remember, ideally, your avatar is someone that resonates with you, relates with you, uh, that resembles you, but ultimately, the best avatar is you. Build your offer, your business, and ultimately your podcast the way you wished existed when you were starting. Once you've done that, then tomorrow we're going to use that to build your laser-focused Godfather offer. We're going to also identify the number one pain point in your podcast, your offer, your business going to be solving. And I'm going to be introducing to you another incredibly powerful principle that completely took my business to the next level, and that is the QMER quantifiable, measurable, and result. That is incredibly powerful. I'm going to explain all of that tomorrow. Don't get, don't worry about it, but that's an incredibly powerful principle. Again, quantifiable, measurable, and result. And I'm sorry tomorrow that Jay is not going to be able to make it because he has other commitments, so I should have removed that, but I can post a, a replay of a video I did for, for my students in the previous uh, previous classes. So it's going to be just us and tomorrow. No guest uh, guest speakers. So we should be done a lot sooner. Crazy brother, you have a question. Go ahead. Whoops. Yeah. Go ahead, crazy. Um, I have two questions for clarity. Okay. Um, the first question is when you said you were going to give us um, your blueprint. Oh yes. Was it provided today, or or was it a a, a PDF for us showing up? It's going to be a, also. It's going to. I'm going to. It's going to be a another uh, slide deck that I created. Actually, it was part of my presentation tonight. But knowing that I would have a a guest, I said that's going to be way too long if I were to teach it. So I'm just going to okay. share that with you guys uh, on the Facebook group later tonight or tomorrow. Okay. Cool. So we'll get it in the group. Yes, in the in the group. So make sure you keep an eye on the Facebook group. Check it every day because I'm I'm posting all the 
uh, links for the live calls, the replays, the resources, the uh, the slides, updates, announcements, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, as well as my Sweet. contact. Thank you, bro. Um, and the second question is for Claire. It's actually three, but uh, the second one was a joke, and it was it's kind of for Michael. I was kind of curious of where the Airy Fairy community hung out if they were on Facebook, because it sounds like a vibe. If you just put it in the chat, Mike, appreciate you. Um, but this the real second question is, um, so what you're saying is I could <clears throat> say my pain point was I wanted to be, I wanted a cat and my family is anti-cats. And when I moved out, I got a cat and the whole process of getting a cat to me was very important. And now I feel fulfilled and I feel loved. I could create a podcast, seek out a community that once experienced being anti-cats or cat hate, and I could offer my service of how to get a Delta cat and have the love that you want every day. Is that essentially and, what you're saying? And faster. Faster because you will help them avoid all the pitfalls, all the time wasted because you've made the mistakes for them. You're going to provide them with a blueprint A to Z, A to Z. All they have to do is just follow your steps. Because again, people pay for two things, transformation and speed. Yes. Then I get it. Thank you, Payman. There you go. You're a smart cookie, brother. <laughs> Did I tell you that before? <laughs> All right, Sorry, Payman. Some... I have a question. Go ahead. So, um, for, for example, you have a product. And then also you do something in your podcasting, but they are not related. So how you can kind of uh, give me some examples up. that's way too vague i don't understand you give me some example concrete examples okay so for example in your podcast we are talking about the lifestyle and then how improve yourself to be a better version of yourself mm -hmm. but the but the product you are selling is totally different for example is about the travel industry and then uh it's about uh, maybe you, a product you have is not related to what you are doing at all. So how you can do that? A better way to put that question would be whether that other part of what you're doing is going to be what your audience needs. Because again, it's not about you, but about your audience. So if you build an audience around, say, self-improvement, but then you, you talk about a travel product, is this something your audience needs and wants? Is this going to elevate the quality of their life so they can live a much more fulfilling, inspiring, empowering, uplifting lifestyle? If the answer is yes, yes. If not, no. So this is very important for you to really understand your niche, your avatar. And that's why I always keep saying your avatar is nothing, no one other than yourself. Because you need to understand the avatar deeply know exactly what is going on in their mind what are the pain points speak the language and so on and so forth so that when it comes to that there's no guesswork you know exactly what they want what they're looking for to summarize that if the second part of what you're saying is let's say use example travel services is that what your audience wants and needs and looking for if yes Let's say you're building, you're building a business around lifestyle, improving yourself, living the life of your dreams by the beach, like Jordan or like me. And then you offer them some travel packages to make that happen. And you can be an affiliate for, say, a website like, say, Expedia or Agoda or whatever. Then, yeah, that could make sense. But if it's not, no. Again, it's all going to boil down to you deeply, intimately understanding your, your 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 niche, your avatar. What is the pain point? What is their needs? What are they looking for? And not just guesswork of what you think or worst, you're trying to push one of your product on them that they're not looking for. If you do that, you will lose your your, your clients faster than anything you can imagine. There's nothing worse for 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 someone on a list to feel that they're just being sold to nonstop. And so, things that they don't even need or want. And this is why on my podcast, I have not done any sponsorships yet. Because once you do sponsorships, guess what? They basically con you can control 
what you can and cannot say. And, and you will have to talk and advertise things that may not be what your audience needs. And if that's what not what your audience needs, then you will lose a lot of credibility very fast. But if it's something that absolutely aligns with what they want, what they're looking for, then by all means. Does it make sense, Rami? Yes, it does. Yeah, 100%. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Let's take one more question, uh, and then we call it tonight. Uh, Michael, go ahead. Not really, not really a question. I wanted to say to Quincy that uh, if you need a testimonial for cats that didn't like cats before, because I like looking at them, but I never want to deal with the hair or the cat litter. <laughs> look at the I tell you, it helps so much with the shadow work and the subconscious work, right? And it really like, because my cat has killed me thousands of times. So it's like, it's opened so much love that I didn't even know existed. So if you need a testimonial, bro, and you want people to open up to that, I'm just saying, I'm your man. So use me. All right. Yeah. That's what we're all, we're all about. Teamwork. Love that. Teamwork at its finest. All right, guys. Let me see how many people we have here. We have still 11 strong souls. Okay, beautiful. You guys are amazing. Katana, you've been very quiet. Why are you slacking? I'm not slacking. I'm just taking it all in. Give me one question. I miss your voice. <laughs> give you one question i a actually, comment a compliment even better <laughs> well your hair's looking very good tonight i know time. do i still have the, the the misplaced hair somewhere in the back i think you got it it, it right, seems cool. to be okay all right what's your question <laughs> shoot um oh my goodness with the when you're niching it down mm. and I think there's a point, I don't know. I'm trying to actually wrap my brain around. Does it have to be actually like one person or can it be that, you know, the experience itself? Depends. What is the pain? What is your zone of genius? What is the pain point you're solving? Well, for me, it's the um, toxic trauma. So adult survivors of toxic trauma. So that's, that's. Define, define toxic trauma. Let's go one or two layers even deeper. Again, the deeper you go, the more laser focused your message is going to be, the more magnetic it's going to be. Toxic trauma is the way that it's described in the therapy world. So that is as far as it breaks down, but it's chronic exposure to extreme trauma, traumatic events. Okay. So like what? Like what? Molestation, rape, beatings being neglected, um, systemic did you, abuse. Did you personally overcome any of those yourself? All of them. All of them. Okay. In that case, that could be a message. Yes. Because again, you need to have gone through it yourself for authenticity's sake. So you can speak from the art in a very passionate way. If you mm -hmm. unfortunately, and in this case, maybe it's unfortunate because this, this were your gifts. If you went to that yourself, then by all means. Share that. Emphasize on that. Okay. Yes. All right. That's what I was wondering. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Michael, go ahead. Well, I did have a question, but I didn't raise my hand. I didn't think I lowered it, but somebody came up as, and let me just say, great, great, uh, great presentation. And I'm glad to be here because I got so much today that I've mm. been working on this. And I'll be super accountable, authentic, that I say I go with the flow. But sometimes we use that as an excuse to not tune mm -hmm. into that energy. So what I got today is really it's time to take action on that uh, because it really reflects the clients, it really reflects the business. I cannot put it on the clients. I cannot put it on the business because they're a mirror. They're a mirror of how serious I take myself, right? And what you really shared today, it's like, you know, I know I help people, you know, like silence their thoughts and things like that. Um, but what you really opened up today is like, I never thought of this in this way. Mm. Um, like, like I have merchandise that I'm sharing with people and I've even given it away. Um, but because I haven't explained what it is, a lot of people are confused about it. So it's the Vibrillion of Vibrillion Next Life. I, I told you a little bit about that payment. Um, and we can break that down because 
I literally have a vision that this is going to be like in schools, in, in, in you know, prisons, because I want to go back to prison and speak, right? So it's going to be in schools, it's going to be in churches. And the reason why is because the reason why I share this example is because this word came to me from a deep state of meditation. So mm. the reason why that example is that word doesn't exist by billionaire, but it is the richness of vibration that you already are super billionaire rich, just this alone right here, right? So the point is to raise the riches of awareness within people to realize they're already rich. So here's my point. Is that when you share that, it's like, wait a minute, I have the evidence that you can think a thought that's never been thought of in this dimension because we have access to infinite. I'm not going to get into that, but we have thoughts that don't even exist now, right now. That's where your Teslas come from. That's where your Einsteins come from. They transcended. Uh, if you look at the Egypt eye of Horus and eye of Ra, the eyebrow represents the thought, the body of thought. Nobody talks about that. Mm. We have a body of thought. We feed that thought and we think that's all we are. So we transcend okay. that eyebrow. We realize we are the whole being, right? Okay. So the point is this, is that what you shared right now, it's like my zone of genius is, I've seen this again and again. When you see someone say, oh my gosh, I had a download for the first time. That means they thought for themselves. That's my goal. That's my zone of genius. And I love helping people think for themselves, free themselves and be themselves. Beautiful. Because we talk, talk about authenticity. Anyways, Payman, this is the last thing that I'll say. When you talk about authenticity is, are you thinking, like, are you bringing your talent that nobody's brought? Because that's what you're here for. You're not here to be a cop. You're here to bring what you're here to bring. And just like Jesus, we can all do it. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you for sharing that, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Even I'm really tired, I also want to make sure everybody has questions answered. Quick question. Three people. Keep it short. Dianara, Shani, and Sarah. I want to have one question, and Genevieve, one question from you guys. Keep it short. And uh, let's finish on a high note. Come on, Dianara, first. A quick question. Question, comment, compliment. The button. Okay, there it is, the button. <laughs> I was like, I lost it again. Oh, man. Oh. Great. Um, I mean, compliment, of course. Thank you so much again uh, for bringing in those experts, especially on the LinkedIn. Hold on, let me take a second to breathe. <laughs> um, spectrum, because again, to me, LinkedIn was associated with just getting a job and that was it. <laughs> you put up your resume, you got, you know, connections for a job. Um, so it's awesome to know. Have you ever got a job through, through LinkedIn? I've, I actually don't have a, a LinkedIn account, but I have my best friend. She's in HR uh, for a nonprofit and she does everything through LinkedIn. So that's why my association with LinkedIn was awesome. just cool. work. Um, but it's awesome to know that it's, you know, everything they, sh they share today. Honestly, I can relate it back to all of the other platforms that I'm on, you know, as far as the, um, you know, engagement and just the content and everything as a whole. Um, so that's, that was super awesome. Thank you so much for bringing them on. Um, and <laughs> as far as the um, other side that we talked about, Zone of Genius and just kind of figuring that out, I don't know, I guess I just fall under the, um, I don't have as much experience as ha uh, pretty much 100% of the people on here. <laughs> That's I okay. Find myself. That's okay. Like... Because all you need to do is to be just one, two, three, four steps ahead of the person you're helping. That's all you need. Exactly. Don't let that exactly. stop you. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, honestly, amazing people that have been on here. And I love hearing just all of their stories. Um, and I don't know. I just, it today was really deep for me because, again, I don't find myself as an expert in absolutely anything. But I can definitely say that I have a calling to help. Uh -huh. What exactly? I don't know in clear, in you know, full clarity, but I know it's there. I know it's coming. So awesome. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing that. Thank you for being with us <laughs> and staying this late. Thank you. <laughs> no Thank worries. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Genevieve, Genevieve, what question do you have for us? Last pointing question. Keep it short to the point. 
Let's get it going. I actually don't have any questions, um, but certainly it can offer uh, compliments to thank you. Uh, what you guys have shared for sure on the platform, and and for you know everyone else who's who's jumped in and asked their questions. I've I've been able to learn from the answers that um, that have been provided for your questions. So thank you guys for that. Love that. Thank you. Thank you for being here, especially this late for us. Thank you, uh, Shani. I just want to say that I really appreciate um, everything that you've put together. It's absolutely incredible. And there's just so much that I've, I, in, I, this is the first time, first day that I've been able to sit here and actually listen to everything uh, without needing to be somewhere else. And it's just, I'm just really, really grateful. And it's really helped me to be able to narrow down on my message too, on what I um, can provide others in in the area of what I do, because I've been so confused for such a long time in like, where am I going with this? You know, I'm a tantric practitioner, but I don't really know how to spread my message. And yeah, so it's been a huge moment of clarity for me. So I really appreciate that. Very welcome, please. Oh, Thank you for being with us here tonight. <laughs> oh, I, I believe in Australia. So this late today. During the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Last but definitely not least, Sarah. Also, just thank you so much. I've You're been welcome. on a journey for six years. Katana knows quite a bit. And you have made so many things so much more clear. So I knew that I was meant to be here. And sure. I did want to ask real quick, kind of with the same niche thing. So with it being my avatar, do I only focus on just that avatar alone? Because my my thing is relationships, all of them, parenting, partners, co-workers, like in every avenue, because I've lived it in every single one. But that's a huge niche, like that's all relationships. So... <laughs> I I get lost in that. Like, do I just focus on just one of those? So but what it's I would recommend, all. what I would recommend is it boils down to you really intimately, deeply understanding your avatar and ask right. them among those three, what is the number one, the most important? And then build your messaging, everything around the number one of all of those. And then number two, number three, number four can be beautiful upsells. Because if you throw everything at them from the beginning, unless you're Tony Robbins, <laughs> you're going to overwhelm them. But instead, blow their mind, help them get transformational result with one pain point. Once you've done that, you have the trust. They will become loyal, faithful, uh, evangelical fans of yours. And then it's going to be much, much easier for you to sell them on pain point number two, three, and four, as opposed to dumping everything on them from the get-go and just completely overwhelming them. Does so that make sense? Kind of people pleasers. Yeah, got it. So what I would recommend, and this is something I, I, I teach inside my academy, but because you've been here so this late, I would I don't mind sharing it with you guys. Do a quick survey and your and your and your and where wherever your audience is, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn, and ask them, hey guys, among these, what is your number one pain point, the one that's really holding you back the most and achieving X, X being the, the answer? For example, if it's overcoming trauma, whatever, and wait until you get 100 replies. How big is your audience? Mine, not very big because I've kept myself hidden on purpose for quite a while. <laughs> that's the first thing you need to work on. So number two. I know. I'm, I'm doing done, that. I'm getting good, there. Good, good, good. And podcasts <laughs> are going to get you there. So if, yeah. if you don't have enough audience to get 100 replies, even if you were to get 10 or 20, that's going to be big enough for you to give you, for you to notice some patterns and pay attention to those patterns because you will notice even if five people mention the same pain point, then you know you're onto something. This is where you need to start. It all boils down to understanding deeply your audience. And that's why I always say your avatar ideally is someone that resembles as much as possible. And ultimately your avatar as you. So among all of those, you mentioned that, that you've been to all of them. Which one of those you went to yourself and that was the most pain, most painful of, of all? That would be a great place to start. 
marriage and my parenting, but probably parenting. Parents There you are go. the, Focus the moms. on that. And guess what? When you help them solve that, then you can you can you can offer them. Hey guys, I also offer this on marriage, kids, whatever. And then you can offer those as, as upsells. And because they, they've already established yourself in their eyes, you've built trust, rapport, you've displayed your expertise, it's gonna be so much easier for them to say yes. And if you were to dump them with everything, unless you're Tony Robbins. See, and that's where I struggle because ultimately I really just want to get on and say, I'm going to lead you back to you because that's all you need. Because once you're here, you're golden, but you can't sell that because people Mm. aren't going to buy that. They buy And it's pretty relationship. vicious. So when you say leading back to you, what is the one thing that they must overcome to get on that path and build your messaging around your messaging, your podcast, your offer around that become the go-to girl. And that once you, whoops, once you help them with that, then guess what? Number two, number two, number four can be beautiful and easy upsells. Does that make right sense? it does it's just that's the one i figured out i can't actually sell to yet because people don't want to buy self-love because they don't even realize that they don't love themselves Then teach them why they have such an issue with self-love. What is what's stopping them from having self-love? Is it a lack of boundary? Is it fear of looking as, as being selfish? Because a lot Right. of people feel leave for others. For example, me, I grew up in an environment in my culture. Me as an eldest son in the family, I had to sacrifice basically my needs for others. I had to make Yeah. sure my siblings were through university, through college. I have two sisters. I had to make sure that they're... do it on their own they finish school and that's why i started life at 35 with nothing but i don't blame them because they didn't know any better but again maybe that's that's why because they they they, they, they were raised in, a, in an environment whether it's family culture whatever that they had to yield for others put others first if that's what if that's what it is So this is where you really need to really understand. Go to your to your audience and ask them. Probe, go deep, not just surface. One, two, three. The deeper you can go, the deeper you understand. And this is why I always emphasize your avatar ideally is someone that resembles you, identify with you, that resonates with you. And ultimately, your avatar is you. Build your business, your offer, your packaging the way you, Sarah, wished existed when you were just starting on your journey. no matter how long that might have been. Right. That does make a lot of sense. There you Start go. Thank at the you. beginning. Thank you. Awesome. And I can't wait um, tomorrow and next and on Friday to get some glowing, glowing, glowing testimonials from all of you about the challenge. I'm not going to ask now because I'm starving. You guys are same thing. So uh, we'll do that on, 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 on Friday. I'll speak on Friday. Is it possible for you guys to ask also tomorrow? To start earlier because I have uh, I have a family event at eight o'clock that I can't miss. Can you guys start two hours earlier, like six Eastern, so we can get done by seven before eight o'clock? Can you guys do that on Friday? And also it's Friday night. Who wants to sit till ten o'clock talking to me? You know, on Friday night. <laughs> can you are you guys okay with that? Starting a couple of hours earlier on 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 Friday, so six p.m. three Pacific for you, Katana. Three o'clock. Is, does that work for you, Shani, in Australia? So instead of 11 o'clock, we start at 9 a.m. On Friday? Well, for you, it's going to be Saturday. Sorry, Saturday. Ah, you can sleep over after. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You guys are phenomenal. Love you guys. And uh, seriously, just like Misha said on Monday night, it's dinner time. Let's all go home. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you, guys. God bless. Please do the, uh, the the brainstorming, do the homework, because tomorrow we're going to use that. And that's going to be the foundation of everything. We're not just building a podcast. We're building your offer, your messaging, and ultimately building your business. And the podcast is going to be the marketing arm of your business. Maybe I should reframe my challenge for the next class. All right, guys. Have a great one. See you tomorrow at 8 o'clock.
Eastern, 5 Pacific, and 11 a.m. Sydney time. Looking forward to seeing you again, Shani, and all of you guys. God bless. See you tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Love you guys. Thank Cheers. you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.